G'day, fellas, and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the southwest side of the map, playing in the color blue as the Chinese. We've got Sigum. Sigum, boys. Sigum. I don't know why. I just, I think of Chief Wiggum when I think of Sigum. And that's where I'm just like, take him away, boys. Make him away, toys. You, got, you guys know Chief Wiggum, right? I mean, mate, mate. Actually, you know what? I know my demographics. You guys are all pretty old. So you guys know Chief Wiggum. Or at least I hope you know Chief Wiggum. Anyway, on the other side of the map, playing in the color red as the Holy Roman Empire. We've got Wanted SAS. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Prairie. We're here once again on what I would consider probably, you know, if, if I was going to rival any maps right now with Dry Arabia, I reckon Prairie would be up there. If I had to do a map tier list, obviously Dry Arabia gets the S plus tier. No one else is in the S plus tier. But I reckon Prairie's coming in solid in the S tier. They're, it's a pretty good map. I, I'm a big fan of it. I think a lot of action happens here. You know, you, you're very promoted to trade. Not promoted to trade, but encouraged to trade. The trading posts are always right in the corners of the map, so it feels really good. There's lots of sheep on the map, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. You know, some people like sheep, some people don't. Not looking at you, New Zealand. I don't know what you guys are thinking, but uh, there's lots of sheep on this map. Also, lots of gold, lots of stone. So I, I think there's a lot of different strategies that you can do on this map. But for China, we've continued to see the meta develop, and I'm looking forward to seeing how Sigum plays this. Now, for anybody wondering, Sigum is a Conk 3 player, and Wanted SAS is also Conk 3. So both of these guys are very, very, very talented when it comes to strategy games. But nonetheless, I'm curious to see how it goes because this is a very notoriously hard matchup for the Chinese. I've talked about it many a time before and we'll probably talk about it many more times. China doesn't really have a good response to the Holy Roman Empire. There's just so many points that the Holy Roman Empire have got uh, better positions than the Chinese. It makes it very hard. Two evenly skilled players, almost always the Holy Roman Empire player will come out on top. Obviously, it, it, it switches depending on uh, whether you've got a skill advantage or maybe you get a map advantage or something like that. But for the most part, as long as you've got a uh, th this matchup, should almost always be in your favor if you do the right thing, quote unquote, the right thing. The goals that we're going to be looking for here for the Holy Roman Empire player are things like, did I say player twice then? The Holy Roman Empire player player? Did I say? I, I'm not sure. I, I, I must have. It's getting late, all right? It's getting late. Uh, the, the main thing that we're going to be looking for for the HRE player uh, is picking up the relics. This is really key. And it doesn't really matter how they do it because there's, there's a number of ways that they can do it, uh, whether that's going into two town centers and then securing the relics in the third age off a Burgrave. That's a possibility. But China, trying to stop them, that's what gets really hard because China love to play their Song Dynasty. They love to play their two town centers. They want to invest a lot of resources in making villages. And the Holy Roman Empire have got a number of ways that they can kill them a lot of timings that they can beat them out with and as a result it makes it very very difficult but we do start to see the age ups coming through Arkan Chapel going to be coming in now for Wanted SAS let's take a look at this one give it a rating oh this is a good this is a good oh this is a good Arkan alright so he gets the gold the corner def definitely gets that so it probably gets about there gets all of the town centre fits farms in between the town centre and the Arkan also gets this starter wood line and gets all the berries and obviously he'll get all the sheep completed completely this is a great Arkan I think this is this is a, a very solid. I'm going to give this a nine out of ten. This is great. So really well done by Wanted to get, to pick up this Arkan Chapel. Now I wonder what kind of strategy he's going to go for because I think that you've got a number of options here uh, playing as the Holy Roman Empire against the Chinese. Uh, but for the most part, I just feel like you know maybe throw down a couple of horsemen. That's it. Like a stable into two or three horsemen. Just harass the gold, harass the stone, and go straight to castle. You know th that's pretty much it. Look to pick up two or three relics. You know, whether you want to go Burgrave or Regnitz, I think Regnitz is probably better uh, than than the Burgrave against China because you can you can buy quite a bit of time. And then you, you're straight into Knights, right? Like, you're, you're into Knights off the back of the Horsemen, and that's it. And you're just hitting the Gold Mine with the Knights, hitting the, the Wood Lines with the Knights, and it comes it comes down to your APM. But speaking of APM, take a look at this. Sheep City, baby. 14 sheep underneath the... Underneath, well, 13 sheep now underneath the mill. That's a lot of sheep, and you love to see that as China. As China. Uh, and, but that's not all. we got three more sheep coming in here. SAS now reaching the feudal age. We can take a look and see as he drops that prelate inside the Arkan Chapel in any second. There we, there we go. Beautiful ring of of, uh, of influence he's got right there. Really, really nice. And something tells me he could probably lure this boar all the way down here and throw the mill down and then just use that mill to capture the boar. I, I reckon he could do it. I reckon he could do it and I reckon it'd be absolutely amazing. Let's see how it plays though. Rotten Boar with Sigum though. Imperial Academy coming up. He's got a lot of gold in the bank right now. I don't know what he's doing with all this gold, but 
it looks to be a bit of an oversight. No, wait, never mind. I'm looking at the wrong player. I was looking at Sigum. I'm like, damn, Sigum, you're uh, you're stacking up that gold. 380. No, that is uh, that's SAS or wanted. He is stacking it up. A little bit of scout on scout action. Save it for incognito, boys. Barbican coming up though now. Uh, so nice little spot, and we do see a, a very interesting opening. I don't think I've ever seen a China player do this. Go straight for horticulture. He's got a lot of villagers on food still. Is he fast castling? Is he going straight to fast? Is he? The reason why I think he's going fast castle is because he's got all this food and he's going horticulture. He's not going wheelbarrow. He's not going survival techniques. He's going horticulture, which makes me think, think he really, really wants food. It could be a fast castle out of our China player. And I think this is probably going to increase in in uh, in prevalence the more that we watch uh, China play. Uh, just because of, with the nerf to Song Dynasty, obviously that makes 2TC weaker on Song Dynasty. So playing Song Dynasty in general is just not as good as it used to be. So I think two or one TC Song Dynasty into a fast castle is definitely viable. You can look to see times around the eight minute mark as well if you've got a pretty solid build order. Uh, without the Song Dynasty, you can actually get it down. I think my fastest time to Castle Age is with China is like 6.30, which isn't too bad. The first of the horsemen are out now on the map. You can see it is going to take a few shots there from the town center. More horsemen surely going to be on the way here, but no, it looks like SAS just going to be sticking with the one horseman. I do like the fact that he's just got a single horseman out, but this horseman isn't going to be enough. And there's the click up. Eight on the Regnitz Cathedral already. So... So far, this opening for SAS has gone perfectly flawlessly. I've got no criticism whatsoever. Uh, it, this is just... He's nailing it out of the park. Um, he could look for a second horseman now in the transition period, but it's kind of a waste, right? Like, you're, you're going to be up so soon, and you're not really doing much with this. Uh, villager here just going to be draining wood. You can see it slowly but steadily draining the wood there. And the age up coming through. But at the same time, I mean, what's Sigum looking for? He's going to be looking for his own stable. And look at the horseman. Huge overreaction here from Sigum. The, and this is just, you know, th this is part of why you want to go for this early stable, right? Because the stable forces a response. And look at the response. It's a complete and utter overreaction coming out from Sigum. He's supervising this as well. So now he's got two. And remember, th this is going to fall back. Regnant's Cathedral comes up. One knight comes out. And that's it. It's all she wrote. The knight will do more than enough uh, to will be more than enough to deal with that. And he's going to be spending all of his important food on this horseman. So a little bit of a misplay here by Sigum. Let's watch and see how he plays it because he might look to force some magic. Maybe he hits the vills on the gold mine potentially. He's not going to hit any vills under the TC. Could hit a villager here over on the wood line. The age up comes through. Where are the prelates at? That's going to be the question. We'll ride on board with Wanted and see if we can spot them. At the moment, it looks like just the single prelate. Let's have a look. Yeah, one prelate at the moment for him. Didn't look to get any in the age up time. Still not making any prelates either. Has got the first knight in queue. A little bit of a run around over on the west side of the map still. Second scout down to the south side. Horseman does go down. More horsemen coming across the map. So he did go for that horseman in queue. And scout is following that back. So now we see him making the uh, the prelates with the Regnitz Cathedral. Rallying down towards the first of the relics. He'll be looking to pick up all five relics this game. Is Sigim going to be letting him? That's going to be the question. And Sigim looking to age up now. Four horsemen. Look at that. He could, he could be clicking up right now if it weren't for that. But it, it does give him that... He got a villager? You got, you got a villager? You got one of Wanted's villagers with a horseman? In 2022? That is, that, is a, that is a wild story. You know, if I told somebody that at a pub, I don't think they'd believe me. I'd be like, no, you didn't kill a villager with a horseman. No, you didn't. It, it's, it's like that, it's that classic bit of Billy Madison where he's like, you see that villager over there? Well, I killed it and I'm a horseman. And Billy Madison's just like, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. We, we know you didn't. That's not, that's not a real story. Anyway, the knights are out. Now, Imperial Palace could be coming down. Interesting opening. So this is where it gets hard for China, right? Like, because China's up on economic... Uh, population but remember a lot of that economic population is doubled up uh through the imperial officials so you can see there's two hit here so you've got to deduct two so 35 versus 30 at the moment um but it's, it's still pretty decent he could look for a wallalo here wallalo would buy him time for the knight to get there he's not even going to need the wallalo though he's going to save it for later knight cleans up both of the horsemen and still up towards the north look at this he actually takes out a prelate as well so very nice very nice work there from sigum the fact that he's able to deny that prelate effectively is uh, is very very smart but Sigum now with the Imperial Palace on the opposite side to the Barbican. Very well played by him. So no to do that. And now where does he go from here? He's going to be going into the Lancers. You can see the consequence of delaying that Castle Age. This is where I, I, if, I feel like if you're going one base fast castle as China, don't go Song Dynasty. Well, what does Song Dynasty add? Like when you think about it from, from the perspective of like, okay, what value do I get from Song Dynasty? 
you get increased villager production time. That's it. You don't get anything else. I mean, you get a barbican, which is is good if you like barbicans. Uh, you also get an imperial academy, which is obviously the, the better landmark in this position. But in reality, it doesn't give you a whole lot, the Song Dynasty. So I feel like it's a waste of resources. Obviously, this is this was an overreaction as well. Uh, but now we can see that the uh, the relics are coming in. Two so far secured for wanted. Third one almost certainly going to be secured. Fourth one almost certainly going to be secured. Fifth one snagged away right now by the prelate. That one is gone into Never Never Land. You ain't finding that one, Sigum. So that's going to be five relics secured for wanted. And that basically means that the game is over for Sigum. There's there's no real way he can contest this. He, it, 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 he's got to play a flawless game for him to be able to contest this. So I'm, I'm curious to see what he pulls out. But the issue that he's going to have is that his enemy is on a very similar economic count. Now, obviously, we've talked already about the Imperial officials, but, you know, let, let's consider the fact that he's also got an extra 40% carry capacity and an extra 40% carry speed. So let's really not compare apples to oranges here. But even then, we've got, you know, minus three here. So you're at 44 versus 35. So we're nine vils different, but we're five relics difference. Three here so far, and obviously two more coming in. And that's what makes it really hard, because that gold is going to go into units. Now, he can look to go Castle Age, or he can look to just make units. It's really up to him how he wants to kill China, because at this point, China, China's goal is to survive, and it's not going to be able to achieve its goal. The, the goal to deny relics just hasn't been achieved. And, and that's going to be your primary goal here as China. Your secondary goal is survival. You know, you don't have to survive it as long as you, <laughs> you deny all the relics. But you, you guys get the point, right? So he's going to be able to get out. He's, and this is the consequence of playing Lancer against the Holy Roman Empire. Is that they're able to send back their lower health uh, knights. And they're going to be able to heal them up under the Regnets. Because those all of those prelates are going to be back there. So he's going to be super careful. Sigum looking for another upgrade here. Fighting out against some of these knights. We've got the classic knight battles. But look at this. One of them gets taken down a second one on one health remains. He's trying to get it out here. Big charge is going to be coming through. He manages to save it as well. Big damage. But now that population really starting to spike up. Both of these guys on 10, 10 uh, knights each. Upgrades are coming through for Wanted as well. It's going to come down to the micro. Who's going to be... Uh, who's pulling this back and Wanted pulling one back? It's not coming down to the micro at all. Numbers are much better for Sigum. Sigum forces him back. There's an opportunity here. If Sigum's got the ability to raid his enemy and look to deny some of those villages, he could be in a great spot. And he could look to overwhelm his enemy. Hit the gold mine. Hit these berries. We know where the villages are. We have Omnivision. He doesn't. Or does he? The Imperial Palace, ladies and gentlemen. I tricked you. I tricked you. I, I made you think that he didn't have Omnivision, but he did actually have it. So he can use Imperial Spice here to expose where the enemy villages are. Let's see if he uses it. Riding on board with Sigum right now. He's moving towards the enemy base. He spots out the Prelate. Could look to pick them off. Gets off a big charge on the front line. Takes out plenty of the Knights. He's getting heals up on the backside. Still no Imperial Spies used at the moment. He's doing a decent job of cleaning it up, but he's holding on. And keep in mind, reinforcements are going to be here for Wanted. He's got four more Knights in queue. And this was a bit of a mistake. A little bit of a mistake from Sigum. He wants to just find those villages and deny those villages. Now going to be looking to clean up that sacred site over on that northwest site. Sigum turning his attention towards this northern position. You can see him rallying towards where there once were villages. Oh, oh no, no, no. There were there were not once villages. There are villages. But still, we don't see those Imperial Spies coming through. Use this skill. Use this Use this unique tech. I don't even know what you'd call it. It's, it's, it's a skill, right? Like a... It, it feels like a skill from a MOBA or something like that. Nice little control coming out, though, from Sigum at this point. I love the way that he's playing it. He's up on village account. In fact, he's up 17 vills at the moment. But remember, when it comes to economic differences, you've got 1,800 over here. Against 1,800, it's actually not that bad. You know what? Sigum's playing a good game. Maybe, you know what, Sigum? Maybe you sold me on Song Dynasty. Now, th the big thing for Sigum is adding in crossbows. I feel like at this point, we want to add in crossbows. Because crossbows are really going to seal the deal against the enemy knights. But at the same time, it's one of those things where it's like, it's the death push. Beautiful little raid coming through. Does get met with a couple of knights. He's going to have to fall back. Doing the right thing. He's looking for more villagers. Where are the Imperial Spies? Get those Spies out. The Spies tell you where all the villagers are. Look where all the villagers are. He even pulls the Relic out. He's like... Oh, he could find it. He could find it. If the Spring emplacement shows... He spots it. He spots all the villagers up there. Does he make a move up towards that position? Knight goes down. He's going for a... He's making a move. He's making a move. 
Let's ride on board and see from Wanted's perspective. Look at the line of sight coming out from this outpost. The extra 25%. Is it extra 25%? Yeah, extra 25% sight range. It's insane. You can see that you can see to, to your... How is this legal? Look how far he sees. Oh my lord. Villagers get all the heads up they need. A couple more knights breaking off. Going to hit the first of the villagers. They've already picked up their textile, so it's going to take a little bit longer. More knights coming in. Going to hit him on the retreat. Managing to take out two knights at the same time up towards the north. Oh, SAS is in trouble. He's on the ropes right now. Sigum, he's found a way back into this game, and it's going to be through the villagers of SAS. Beautiful stuff coming in from him right here. I did not expect to see this at all. This has been, this has been a huge play from Sigum right now. I'm sitting up in my chair. I'm holding the microphone to my face. I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm in Canberra right now. I'm casting live in the ACT, the capital of Australia. I'm not originally from there. I'm on my brother's computer right now. He needs a little bit of assistance with his with his microphone arm, and I'm, I'm giving it to him. Don't you worry. But geez, Louise, this game just got exciting. I'm going to put you guys back down there. I'm going to put my head down a little bit. Hold on. I'm going to clear my throat. Give me a second here. All right, we're good. Sigum. How have you found a way back into this game? This is looking glorious, and now the attacks come through. Don't tell me you used the Imperial Spies. He still hasn't used the Imperial Spies. Look at the villager count, though. Down down 25 villagers at this point, still getting cleaned up. He's not going to have anywhere to go inside these outposts. Cleaning him up at the same time. A counterattack on the south side. There are attacks all over this map. Sigum is doing it right now to one of the best in the game. Wanted SAS. Look at the knights in the middle of the map. 20 knights against 20 knights. It is just even Stevens here in this game. Let's have a look at the moment at what the income is. You're sitting at about a total of around 2,700. Compare that over here and you've got about 2,200. That Chinese difference is coming in. I can't believe Sigum's showing me the light. The new way to play China is looking glorious right now. Look at the night numbers here. Oh my Lord, Sigum. How does he, how does he, how does he not win this? This is going to be insane. This is going to be crazy. This is a, a matchup that is so damn hard to win as China. And Sigum shows us a way. No outpost down here on the south side. This this night, not a single chance it's going to be dying unless 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 there's an overreaction of 12 knights. But at the same time, in the middle of the map, SAS is looking to push through. He's got plenty of upgrades as well to attack coming through compared to Sigma, who's got nothing. Finally, oh no, that's Harden Spearman. Spearman? You don't want to be going Spearman against knights, my friend. They're just going to run you around forever. You got to be going crossbows. That's what's going to force the issue here. But now Sigma falls back. 23 knights against 23 knights. The only difference is there's a bit of healing on the side of wanted SAS. He's trying his best to push through. Doesn't really find much. Could be looking for villages. On the south side, there's a lot of idols. Where does he go next for food? He's completely all out on this south side. He might have to think about migrating over towards the east side the consequence of not going for it and ladies and gentlemen we got ourselves a little bit of a battle as Sigum goes deep right now the knights charging through all of the priests on the back line look at the monks as they go the prelates healing up throwing off that extra armor and attack speed as well and Sigum he's got the number advantage I think he might have it ladies and gentlemen SAS in trouble right now he might be heading back to the pavilion here. Indeed he will be. Look at the numbers. Sigum overwhelming his enemy. Sigum looking glorious, showing the Chinese way. Good stuff. All right, Sigum. Let's go. Counterattack time. We've got Imperial Spies. We click that button and we send our units to every single corner of the map. Well, not every single corner, but most of the corners. There's one here. There's a couple more here. We clean up these. Come on, Sigum. You got the numbers. You got the know-how. You can do it, I believe. Look at SAS. SAS going to be coming in. Gets a nice big charge under the front line. It's double charge. They cancel each other out. And at the same time from behind, the Spearman going to be copping a little bit in the backside. He's hardened though, so don't mind him. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry. It's a, it is a family-friendly show. Uh, that was not intended. More Spearmen's looking to join the fray. No, no veterancy yet at this point. But the number's starting to dwindle for Sigma. He loses a lot of units there. Ideally, would have loved to have seen a couple of, uh, a couple of uh, healers coming out. More charges coming in. SAS throwing away his units. Got to be careful. Sigum is looking solid in this position. Looking to overwhelm the enemy base. A little bit of a raid on the backside, but it does go down. Unfortunately, sends it too low of a health knight on to do that mission. But two more knights head to the north. We see another outpost coming down with the sprinkled emplacement shortly going to be dropped in. He's heading up towards... No, he's changed his, his mind. He's looking for food right now, but little does he know all the food is underneath the Holy Roman Empire Ark and Chapel. Look at that bad boy. Collecting up plenty of wheat for you and it looks like he did expand over towards his eastern position he's going to be a bit more nomadic so role-playing as the mongols 
looking for where he can try and drop this down. Now, one of the key things is that China at this point in the game, 19 minutes, 20 minutes, should have transitioned to farms. But we take a look inside the base of Sigum and we don't see a single farm. And the reason why is because he's not 2TC Song. He's 1TC. And that means his wood economy is not going to be as strong as what it would be if he was on that 2TC play. He is focused completely on units. This is a new style of China we're seeing today. And it's a beautiful style. And now the, the stable going to come down. Emergency repairs should come through for wanted. Let's see if he remembers to do it. This can be hard to remember. He does remember to do it. He is a seasoned Giga Chad right here. Coming out, the numbers are looking solid. Look at this. Lanch connects. This is the reason why we go crossbows. Because the Lanch connects. How are we going to deal with the Lanch connects? This could be it. More knights being rallied to the middle of the map. Veteran Spearman coming through. Doesn't look like he's picked up any um, upgrades from the blacksmith just yet. Lanch connects coming in behind. He's got to make sure he's paying attention. He is paying attention. He does manage to get away, but he's going to be losing plenty of units here. Those lands connects. No real way to deal with them. This is what he's going to be so careful of. These guys swing to win. Ronald McDonald, you can see him right there. Red on the top, yellow on the bottom. Watch out for him. You've got to pick these bad boys off. The response from Sigum immediately should be archery rangers. He needs a ranged unit to deal with this. If he doesn't, he's going to be in a world of pain, a world of hurt. And now the turnaround comes through. He's looking to try and pull a couple of them away. He needs to focus down these Ronald McDonalds, and you can see that they're managing to make their way onto the front line. Still Sigum for fighting for his life, but hold on a minute. The numbers for Sigum have gone terribly. How strong are these units? They somehow turned it around at the same time. Counterattack up towards the north, over towards the east side. More units heading onto that backside. Sigum really giving us, a, giving us a Chinese show today. But Ronald McDonald and all of his friends on the floor. Look there, you can see the, the, the Hamburglar as well. He's lost his life. Mean, speaking of lost their life, over on the, this northeast side of the map, four Lancers have taken out a single villager, unfortunately. Not the, not the success story you'd like to write home about. Now onto the south, the defense going to be coming through. He's got the villager advantage, up 23 vills. Both players have taken out eight villagers this game. And you definitely think from Sigum's perspective that he would have taken out a lot more than that. Eight definitely seems underwhelming considering the control he's had this game. But now we enter into a bit of a lull period where I'm throwing about a question marks because we've got no farm transition for Sigum yet. Yet, I say yet. So what does he do? What does he do? because he, he can't make units. And he didn't go for his clock tower and because there's no clock tower. He's got no siege. And because he's got no siege, he's got no way to deal with the Lanch Connect, at least not yet. And he needs range units. You can see the archery ranger sitting here, but, but no one's home to make the range. And now all those units are going to be moving down towards this south side. If they find villagers, he's in trouble. He's in a world of pain. And SAS is on the look for it. Up towards the north. More Lanch Connects there. Single knight coming through. I don't know what this path thing is. Does get caught out though. Continues to, moving down around the south. He's got no scout. He's got no idea where his enemy is. Spots the villagers moving. Could go for a little bit of a run here. Doesn't do it. Could get cleaned up. We don't know what he's waiting in the winds here for Sigum. It could be anything. And it is indeed quite a large mass of knights looking to try and pick it off. But just be careful. These guys don't mess around. You might think that fork looks delicious. Well, I assure you, it is not. You wouldn't want to be eating that for breakfast. I tell you that much. I'd much prefer a happy meal. Outpost coming up now over on the east side. Knights moving up towards the north. You can see Sigum with great control here. Beautiful multitasking, but perhaps that's just credit to Sigum with regard to that villager loss. You know, Sigum should have should have taken or yeah, Sigum should have taken out so many more villagers this game. And he just hasn't. SAS has done a great job, and now we see the next batch of reinforcements coming through. Somehow SAS was able to get out with the knights. The Lanch Connect down to the south side, also gonna be getting out. They're, they're looking for villagers. Look at this. Look at this. He's looking for these villagers. That could be good game in itself. Uh, if there are villagers... Oh my god, there are still villagers there. Oh, this is going to be terrible. If he's got him distracted, if he's got him in multiple areas, this could be immediate just GG. Oh, they're going to go in. Oh, they're going to... It's going to be a massacre, ladies and gentlemen. Put away the Happy Meals and get yourself out some, uh, some banana bread because they are heading to heaven. Look at him go down. He's taken out in a, in a single swing. More than 12 villagers go down. Knights now onto the north side. Now we've got Sigum going for a little bit of a counterplay. On the front side, he's got his villagers here, but more villagers going down. Take a look at them as they just get eaten alive. Things not going well right now for China. Village accounts for both of these players dropping down. Knight's also going to have to back out, and good game gets called. Sigum's going to be tapping out. SAS victorious. Just a, a lack of crossbows. Had you had a few crossbows in there, able to pick out those Lange Connects, you would have been in an amazing position. Sigum, well played. Fellas, go check out SAS. I'll leave a link in the description of where you can catch him live over on Twitch. He streams in English. He's a great streamer and content creator. Go say good day from me, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.